Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. Today we're going to be talking about marine chronometers and there's not going to be much watches, really more of learning. Uh, it's pretty interesting. It's an idea I've been floating around in my head for a while and finally I said, you know what, Let, let's, let's get this episode out of the way because I think it's of interest. I, I think it's really cool. So the marine chronometer, there's a, there's a book, I should probably get to that first. There's a book that was recommended to me a long time ago. I read it many years ago. It's called Longitude by Dava Sobel. Many of you probably know it and it is about the quest to invent the marine chronometer. The marine chronometer is nothing more than a shipboard clock that is very accurate and kind of the forefather of the chronometer that we strap onto our wrist, the COSC chronometers that we strap on our wrist nowadays. The marine chronometer was a very accurate clock used at sea for the purposes of navigation. And what struck me as very funny and history kind of repeating itself is that the chronometer was invented for navigation. It was important uh, to figure out longitude, and that's what we're going to be discussing. Uh, but, you know, fast forward, that was this is in the mid 1700s, fast forward 250 plus years, and we need accurate timekeeping atomic clocks for the GPS that's in our phones, in our cars, uh, and everywhere else. Because GPS, re you know, relies basically on extremely accurate timestamps to pinpoint, you know, to triangulate your position based on uh, three, three to four, and then more satellites for error correction. Uh, so the marine chronometer is basically, was basically invented for navigation. You know, people think, oh, it was invented to tell time. No, it was invented for navigation. So what's, what's the big idea? What, what's the big deal? Why? Well, first, let's discuss why it was difficult to make a clock that was accurate at sea. And when, if you think about it, it should be obvious. There's, you know, there's rolling and pitching of the boat, which will affect uh, the balance of a timekeeping mechanism. Don't forget, this is not quartz. You know, this is 250 years ago, where dealing with real mechanical clocks. Uh, there's temperature swings day and night, <laughs> there's humidity, there's salt spray going all over the place, so, you know, they're kept in a, an environmental box. Um, so it was difficult to, you know, to create a chronometer uh, that, that would keep time to the accuracy that was required for navigation. And the man that, you know, I guess went up to the task and finally won the prize was John Harrison. Uh, and he's basically credited with being the father of the marine chronometer. So what's the big idea? Why do we need this thing? Well, when you're, na I'm, not a, I'm not a mariner. I don't navigate by the stars. I don't navigate by the sun. I use GPS. <laughs> but when you're in a boat and you're traveling, you know, from one, con one continent to another continent, how do you know where you are? Well, they have a device called a sextant, and I'll try to show a picture of it. And a sextant is used to, can use it to sight the sun. You can use it to sight Polaris, a North Star, if you're in a Northern Hemisphere. Uh, and you can use it to kind to figure out your latitude, you know, on a map. So the way a sextant would work would be, let's say during the day, okay? Uh, the navigator would sight the horizon, sight where the sun is uh, in the sky. And at solar noon, which you could get by just obviously taking a whole bunch of different measurements and taking the biggest one, because the sun is the highest and it's, it's at its zenith when it's sol local solar noon, uh, you take that angle at solar noon and you can read off the device uh, what, your, um, what your latitude is, obviously depending on time of year and all the other stuff. Um, but latitude was, I don't want to say easy, but they kind of had it figured out. There's real no method to figuring out what longitude was. You couldn't figure out, you know, so longitude measures how far you are east or west of a point. And there was really no established method to do that. And that's where the marine chronometer came into play. So what we're going to do, uh, I'm do a little demonstration, uh, I hope, on paper, and uh, I can show you how the marine chronometer is important and how it's used for uh, navigation. Uh, let's head on over and check it out. So I'm not a fancy uh, graphic designer or, or video editor. so. I kind of drew it all out on a map, and I, I think I can convey the point successfully. So this is a map of the Atlantic Ocean in the middle here, the USA. Uh, Europe is over here. Here's London. And I've drawn a couple of lines of longitude, 0, 15 degrees west, and 30 degrees west, approximate, of course. Uh, and I've drawn 51 degrees latitude, because that's, that's what goes through London. This is basically, you know, more or less, this is where GMT is defined as. Uh, and I just did, just for fun, 40 degrees north, uh, which basically is right around New York City. 
So how this would work is I, I've got a little chart down here in the corner. And this is how, I, this is how I'm going to try to con convey the whole thing to you. And I imagine there's a navigator or whoever, whoever it is, whatever, whoever it's called on a boat. And he's taking, or she, uh, 1700s, probably a he though. Uh, he's taking many readings with a sextant over a course of, let's say, at 15 minute interval, intervals. Reading one, reading two, three, four, and five. You'll say, well, how do they know it's 15 minute intervals? Well, they do have a, the marine chronometer. What is important is that when they set sail, well, I'm going to say they are leaving uh, from London, you know, somewhere around, you know, GMT. When they set sail, the ship's chronometer and solar time are synchronized. So we're just going to say for, you know, for our own purposes, it's solar noon, the ship's chronometer is set to noon, and then the ship sails, and it goes on its way. Let's say it's coming to New York for, that. that's basically my goal right now. Uh, let's say, and it's sailing, and it it goes, it's at a certain point. And I'm going to basically just say that the point it's at is right here. You and I know it's here, but the people on the boat, they have no idea where they are. And they're trying to figure that out. So it's during the day, okay? And the navigator is going to make some sightings of the sun. He sights the sun a bunch of times in 15 minute intervals. He sees uh, it's 60 degrees, 15 minutes later it's 62, 15 minutes after that, 64, and then it goes back down to 62 and 60. You can see what I've done here is that right at around this third reading, this was solar noon right here, this 64 degrees. Because the sun was the highest angle in the sky, and then it started, it was going up to it, and then it was decreasing from it. Of course, there's no daylight savings time, because during daylight savings time, 1 p.m. Is the, is the point of highest sun. But we're in the 1700s, and we're not worrying about those things. Uh, so we see that 30 minutes after we started, the sun was at its zenith, 64 degrees. And let's say that through the sextant charts and sailing charts, they've determined that that means that at that time, their local latitude was 40 degrees. Again, this is just reading off of a sextant uh, and using charts. Um, of course, you could also, they could have also cited Polaris and done it at night, but I'm using it during the day. It's just, it's easier for me to figure out. So while they were making these readings, they would also record th this time at home, which if you remember, is the ship's chronometer. So let's say it was, well now, obviously I can work backwards and figure it out. So this is 1.30, 15 minutes later it was 1.45, and then at 2 p.m. at home, it was solar noon where we are here. Okay, so think about that for a minute. We look back, we say, okay, when we made this recording, of 64 degrees, which meant, our, which meant our local latitude was 40 degrees north, the time at home was 2 p.m. So now let's back up a bit, and we know that the Earth is a circle, right? 360 degrees in a circle, 24 hours in a day. So besides the crazy geopolitical time zone lines that we have, every 15 degrees around the globe is one hour difference in time. It's just natural. The sun is, excuse me, the earth is revolving at a constant rate. Every hour it revolves about 15 degrees. In 24 hours it revolves 360 degrees, and these are all things that we know. I'm saying revolve, I meant rotate, right? It's rotating. So if it is, if we made this sighting and we knew we we're at 40 degrees latitude, and it was, now we know that was solar noon, that was high noon, and we look and we go, oh wow, it was two o'clock in London. Well, if it's 2 o'clock in London, uh, that's a two-hour difference. If every hour is 15 degrees, well, then we know that two hours is 30 degrees. So we know that we are 30 degrees west of where we started. We have a latitude, 40, from the sextant. We have a longitude, 30, from the chronometer. Boom. We've just pinpointed our location. Now, again, this isn't GPS. I'm not getting accuracy to within 10 meters. You know, it's, I forgot what the accuracy of the chronometer was supposed to be. Uh, I think it was, was it half a degree or a degree of longitude, something like that. But still, it's much better than taking a crapshoot and not knowing how far east or west you were from your, from your uh, origin. So think about what this means for people. And they now know how far from home they are. Uh, they know possibly if they had a, a map to where they were going, uh, how far they have to travel still. This is basically olden days GPS. It was amazing. You know, we take it for granted today. It takes us two seconds 
if that, to pop open the phone and you know, get Google to pinpoint us on a map. But this is really the old school method. So we use the sextant for the latitude, the chronometer, the ever important chronometer for the longitude. Now you see where the accuracy of the chronometer comes in, because if the chronometer drifted minutes a day, that would be a major problem. Because after being at sea for a month, you know, the chronometer now is off by how many hours is it off by, and, and now we have no idea where we are. Anyway, uh, that's it. I'm going to wrap it up there. This has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. I'm showing you old school navigation that I kind of <laughs> just cobbled together. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. If you have any questions or comments, or maybe you know a lot more about this than I do, um, which is very possible, put it down below. I do love to read it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.